Good morning, Mon Petit, and welcome back to my channel. And welcome to, as you can see, the most beautiful sunshine morning this morning. I am not gonna lie to you, I have been doing this thing this morning, which I feel like I'm never gonna stop doing. Someone please tell me when you kind of stop not believing that this is your home. I'm still coming down every single morning and especially on a morning like this morning when the sun is streaming in and I just sit in my nook and I just stare at this kitchen. I stare at this space and just think, how is this our home? How do we get so lucky that we get to call this space a home? It is honestly just mind boggling to me. When does that end? Will it ever end? I feel like it won't because I just still cannot get over this space, cannot get over this kitchen, especially on a morning like this morning when the sun is streaming through and it's just the most beautiful day. I just feel so, so lucky to have this space. So I've just been working away in the kitchen this morning, got my little nook behind me, which I'm so, so glad that we did. Alex isn't 100% sure about the chairs in here, but even just from like a practicality standpoint in the sense that I just love sitting in here, I feel like it's like reignited my love for this kitchen. It's reignited my love for the garden and... I just love spending my mornings here, especially because this is where the sun hits first thing in the morning. So I come downstairs, I make myself a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, and I just sit and stare and just think, how did we get so lucky? Does that ever end? Do you ever stop feeling that way? Let me know. But today is a funny day. I feel like today is a true April showers kind of a day. As you can see, the sun is currently shining. However, and even looking at the forecast, and I don't know if you can see, the sun is literally going behind a cloud right now. It is one of those sunshine showers, sunshine showers kind of a day, which we get so much here in the UK in April. Like if you look at the window, actually you can probably see there's raindrops on the window because it was raining earlier this morning. But when the sun comes out, I don't mind. I can actually see, can you see how gray that sky is? Let's just not look at that and hope to goodness that we get more sunshine than showers today. But it really is feeling like April. Now I feel like this is such a typical April weather, although I've still got a few layers on it's chilly at the moment still very very chilly i always do this thing where i like look back and think about what i was like wearing or like how the weather was over the last couple of years and to be fair this time last year in april it still was cold but a couple of years ago in april it was boiling like 25 degrees which i know <laughs> anyone from the not, not from the uk is gonna be like really early 25 degrees was boiling but here in the UK, 25 degrees just hit so different than like 25 degrees abroad. But yeah, it was 25 degrees, beautiful sunshine. I was in like dresses. I am so ready to get all of my dresses out of storage. I feel like the wardrobe switchover is gonna be coming soon because I am just so, so ready to bring out all of my dresses, start dressing for summer and start putting away some more like wintry pieces. I definitely feel like we're in those transitional pieces now. Like it's definitely trench coat weather although it is still a knitwear weather, but that being said, I have actually ordered some new dresses that I want to add into my wardrobe that I'm really, really excited about for spring. So I just really want to get into the spring spirit now. I feel like it's so late coming this year here in the UK and I am impatient. I am ready for spring. And just as I'm about to start vlogging again, the sun goes back behind a cloud. I feel like today is just going to be one of those days where the light is literally like this. It will be beautiful sunshine and then suddenly it's gonna go behind a cloud and when the rain comes, it will literally, here in the UK, when we get rain, sometimes it is mad because it just, you'll suddenly feel like everything's enclosing around you and you can just feel the like darkness coming really, really quickly. The rain will come and then about five minutes later, beautiful sunshine again, which is just so typical of April showers. But I've just made myself my morning cup of coffee and my Elevens snack of choice of the morning is a little little bunny. We've got a lot of Easter chocolate to make our way through and I feel like nothing beats a lint bunny. In fact, I would love to know what is your favorite Easter chocolate? Are you an egg kind of a girl? Are you a bunny kind of a girl? Do you love just getting like a pack of mini eggs? Do you prefer a dairy milk chocolate? Do you prefer a Kit Kat and Malteser? Or do you like a classic lint? For me, I think nothing beats a classic lint egg. I just, for me, 
I feel like nothing beats a classic lint bunny. And I mean, is there anything more just nostalgic than that noise? So I've got my Levinses snack of choice and my morning cup of coffee. But I wanted to talk about a film that Alex and I watched last night because, oh my gosh, you need to watch this film. It was amazing. And I feel like it's been a long time since we've watched like an easy watch kind of a film that actually was really, really good. It was on Apple TV. And I also feel like it's been a really long time actually since we've... Like, I just feel like we don't have the time to watch films as much as we used to. I don't know what it is, but I just, I feel like we've been so busy. So let me know if you have any good film recommendations, because we really need to make more of a habit of having, like, film nights, date nights, just sitting down together and watching something. And we watched a film the other night called Coda. And we watched a film last night called Coda. C-O-D-A. Now, I'm not going to lie, I didn't actually realise this until I googled it. I am, I'm always that person that Googles films. I'll Google like where I've seen an actor from, where I've seen an actress from, what else they're in. I'll Google the meaning of the name. And like, if I don't understand a plot, I'll Google like, why did that happen? Or like, what does that mean? I am that person. I'm, I know that's really annoying to some people, but that is just it's how I like to watch films. Um, but it's called Coda, C-O-D-A. And I thought that was her name. No, no. Coda means, it was an acronym and it's Children of Deaf Adults. So it's basically about a film who is a girl so it's basically a film about a girl who is the only hearing in a family of deaf, which I didn't really know much about. So again, Googled it. And I didn't realize that if you have two deaf adults, there is actually a 90, 90% chance of having a hearing child. So the chances of having a hearing child are huge. And it's actually kind of heartbreaking because she's an older brother who is also deaf, which means the chances of him also being deaf was 10%. And it's just basically about how her family and her navigate the world. I feel like the pressures that you see on her, which obviously is so, it's not a true story or anything, but it is just so accurate to obviously what so many children must have to go through in America, in the UK. And basically, without giving the whole film away, she really enjoys singing and she gets into singing. And obviously none of her family know if she's a good singer. None of them even know what she sounds like. And there's this really, really poignant moment where she's at a concert singing and all her family come and watch. And in the middle of the song, it just goes quiet. And it shows their perspective. Because obviously when you're like in a concert as well, she's so far away, they can't exactly lip read, they can't like hear the music. It's not as if they can put their hand to a speaker and like feel the bass or anything, feel the beat of it. And the, the poignantness of it, like I just feel like the impact that that has when it just goes completely silent. And the only way that they can tell if she's good, basically, the only way they can kind of like gauge what she's like as a singer is basically by looking around at other people and seeing other people maybe nodding along to the beat, seeing people like cry because she's got such an amazing voice, like seeing them smiling and just watching her with such pride. And it's just so heartbreaking. It's one of those films, it might be worth having some tissues because it is quite sad, but it's such a good, film it was amazing in fact i actually found this because i'd seen something on tiktok i'd seen quite a big scene on tiktok um and it was just such a lovely scene and it just is very very heartbreaking and heartwarming at the same time so a definite must watch if you're looking for a new good film just to spend a friday night just having a bit of a movie night maybe get a takeaway and just enjoying each other's company with your partner and just watching something new different and very good. Not like action, it wasn't difficult to follow. And one thing actually which I really liked about it is that there was a lot of sign language in it. The three actors in the family, again I googled this, were actually deaf actors who obviously knew American Sign Language fluently. And it's the kind of film you have to put your phone down because half of the film is them signing to each other. So if, you, if you're on your phone, you'll miss things. The amount of times that like, I get a notification, I kind of check my phone and then I'll be like, hang on, what did I miss? And I put my phone away. I need to really concentrate on the film. And it's so rare for me to actually concentrate on a film, have my phone put away and not just like multitask. So it was a really, really good one. Definite must watch. Coffee machine's making a noise at me. A definite must watch. I would really, really recommend. So let me know if you have any good film recommendations that you have watched recently because I am all ears. I'll add it to our to watch list because we are always looking for good new films to pick up. So I've just come upstairs to get myself ready because I have a really fun day planned. Also, can I just say the obsession with the Bobbi Brown lip serum is real. The texture of it is just so moisturizing. It feels as thick as a lip gloss without being as sticky as a lip gloss. Like it's just so nourishing on my lips. I am just obsessed. You would have seen this after I unboxed it after my trip into London a couple of weeks ago. And oh my goodness me, 
I'm so, so in love with it. This is in the shade Bare Pink, and I would love to get it in a couple of other colours. Just maybe a little bit, like, darker and richer to give me a little bit more colour. But you know what I'm like? I'm very minimal with my makeup at the moment. I feel like the minimal makeup trend is still huge at the moment. Also, I'm really unsure about my hair today. I was trying something a little bit different because I feel like I've just been doing the same hairstyle over and over again. And it's one of those hairstyles that I feel like it looks better. Like, I'm looking at it in the mirror, and it looks cute. I'm looking at the camera and I'm like, mm, I just feel like it looks a bit messy. But I've added the gorgeous little linear earrings, which I am so obsessed with, which you can still potentially use my discount code for. I'll leave it linked down below. Give it a try. See if you can use the discount code if you do want to shop anything to get 20% off at linear because they have so many gorgeous pieces. And I just love how they look with a look like this. So yeah, it's one of those hairstyles that I feel like annoyingly looks nicer in real life than it actually does on camera, which I feel like is so difficult about this job the amount of times where i'm like my makeup looks really nice in the mirror does it look nice on camera my hair looks nice in the mirror it doesn't look nice on camera so i'm not sure what i think about the hair but i was trying something different and i also just wanted to get it out of my face to be honest because i have a really fun afternoon plan i am heading to one of my favorite places here in the new forest limewood house i actually have a pudding date this afternoon which i'm really really looking forward to i'm going to go see my friend emily who i feel like you have seen on the vlogs before i'll leave her instagram linked down below because emily is just sunshine in human form i love her to pieces she's getting married this year and alex and i cannot wait for their wedding and she sent me a reel the other day actually and it was a pudding or like a dessert at limewood house and she literally sent it to me being like I think we need to go and try these. I was like, 100%, I'm down. Tell me when and where and I will be there. She was like, you free today? We can go for a pudding date? I was like, I am 100% down for a pudding date. We're literally going, we're not even having like full on food. It's just pudding. And I could not be more excited. I'm not gonna lie to you. I feel like I've shown you around Lionwood so many times, but I'm really hoping that the greenhouse will be open. I might actually give you a little bit of a tour of Lionwood because they asked quite a few new faces that have joined me since we moved to the new house here in the new forest so i might give you a little bit of a tour because limewood house is just one of the hot spots of the new forest in my opinion i am there almost weekly i love just going for a little wander around for a little stroll you can go for a stroll around like the grounds and actually the walk that i went on recently just from bolton's bench that is literally you can do a walk from bolton's bench to limewood if you want and then you can walk past all the horses all of the new forest ponies which i just think is such a like it's just such a unique thing about the new forest which i absolutely love so they've got beautiful grounds they've got a greenhouse there which i would love to check out and see if it's open and see what they are growing at the moment because in summer they usually have it like just completely open you can wander in and out have a little look at what they're growing and i always take so many photos there in summer throughout the summer months if you follow me on instagram you'll probably recognize the greenhouse because it's all over my feed throughout may june july and august um but yeah, I might even give you a little bit of a tour inside because it's just such a beautiful hotel slash house. Like you don't have to go just if you're staying for the hotel. You can go for coffee, you can go for lunch, you can go for dinner. It is one of my favorite places here in the New Forest. And whenever people tell me like, where would you recommend visiting here in the New Forest? My, my top one spot is always Limewood House. I mean, Cheaton Glen is another beautiful place to go and visit, but to me, Limewood, I mean, Limewood is a lot closer as well. Limewood's literally five minutes down the road from me, um, but it's just, so beautiful so we're going for pudding and i literally cannot wait i also can't wait to see emily because i always feel like every time i see her we just she's that person that fills up my cup you know what i mean you know when you have some friends that you leave and you feel a little bit exhausted you feel like your social battery is drained i feel like she fills my social battery and i always have such a lovely time with her so i'll leave her instagram at linked down below i need to put some perfume on actually i I'm really feeling switching up my perfume a little bit at the moment and just going for this more kind of like spring scents and going for this more spring tones. I am loving at the moment Molten Brown Flora Luminette. This is such a beautiful, like the height of spring, even a summer fragrance, I would say. I feel like the notes in this just really give me like floral vibes but in a more deep and rich way so i'm actually really enjoying this for spring but like in the evening i'd say it's more of a spring evening scent obviously joe and i have a lot of gorgeous spring fragrances i've got my drawer here which has got all of my perfume inside of it if you can see that there um but this is where i keep all my perfume just so that when i'm getting ready in the morning i can remind myself to put it on when i'm doing top ups um another favorite poppy and barley i love this as a fragrance this is just like a really lovely 
Again, very floral scent. This is much lighter in terms of the tones. Like the undertones are not dark at all. I'd say this is much more of like a daytime scent. And do you know what? This layers so beautifully with actually. If ever you're the kind of person that loves layering fragrances, Scarlet Poppy. These two together, I would actually recommend doing Poppy and Barley for the day and then layering Scarlet Poppy over the evening. And it just adds like a bit of richness to the fragrance. I love these two paired together. So that's an option to wear today. Obviously, English Pear and Freesia. I do absolutely adore. I feel like this is such a great one for spring, summer and autumn. It's a really, really beautiful lightweight, but a little bit fruity. I would say it's almost like it's not like a fruity scent in the sense of it doesn't actually smell like pears. It more smells like pear trees, if that makes sense. Like it's really beautiful, a really lightweight, again, daytime fragrance, which I would say is probably my signature scent. Whenever friends of mine smell someone with English pear and freezer on, they're like, you're wearing Ellie's perfume. They literally will recognize it straight away. Or my other favorite spring fragrance, English pear and sweet pea. I kind of loathe them for giving them the same at first. I feel like they should have changed it to sweet pea and English pear. I know English pear and something flows better, but I feel like people get really confused. In fact, I got confused. I don't know if you remember if you've been following since last year. They sent me this over and I, I don't know if it's the dyslexic in me or I don't know if it was just because I was like skimming it, reading it quickly. I hadn't quite twigged that it was a different fragrance. And it was one of you guys that were like, Ellie, that's not English Parent Fruit. I think that's the new launch. And I was like, oh my goodness, I had not even realized. So English Parent Sweet Pea is a beautiful one. It's a lot lighter. And I would say a lot more floral than English Pear and Freesia. English Pear and Freesia is almost like a pear orchard. And I would say English Pear and Sweet Pea is much more like a flower field with a little bit of like, pear tree essence thrown in there. I feel like the English pear is the, actually the least important part of the perfume. So I really do feel like they should have renamed this to Sweet Pea and English pear. I think I might wear this today because I'm really feeling those like light spring vibes. And I do absolutely love this. This is the kind of perfume that I feel like gets so many compliments as well. I do absolutely love it. And yes, I'm that person that just completely douses themselves in perfume because I always love it smelling nice. So yeah, just some nice little fragrances that I feel like just to top yourself up for spring. I will leave all of these linked down below if you are looking for a new fragrance. Poppy and Barley is a beautiful one as well. So I will save that for another day because I do absolutely adore that. As I've been talking to you, I feel like literally it's been doing what I was saying earlier with regards to the sun going up and down, like lighter and darker. It is getting darker and darker and more gray and more cloudy. So fingers crossed that it stays dry so that I can at least go and explore the greenhouse, go and explore the grounds and show you around Lyman House because I think it's going to be the most wonderful afternoon with my bestest pal. I honestly just love her to pieces. So um, yeah, I will leave this link down below. If you are looking at lovely new spring fragrance because I feel like now is the perfect time and the sun's come back out again. <laughs> honestly, I can't go over this weather. I know it's so British to keep talking about it, but it's because it is just so unpredictable and so interchangeable and here in the UK we just we can't get over that ourselves but yes I feel like now is the perfect time to maybe take stock of your fragrance collection have a look at what you've got in like your drawers have a look at what you've got in your collection and see what you can maybe update for spring because there are some where I do feel like I have in my drawers for quite a while because I don't use them all the time They're like a very seasonal fragrance and you know they might have gone off by now like you shouldn't really keep them for all too long so I think now's the perfect time to take stock of your perfume collection maybe see if there's any that you want to add into it and update with a new beautiful spring fragrance but I am now going to head off go and see Emily and have a lovely afternoon at life. Actually before we do head off I do just want to take a moment to appreciate the fact that it is officially trench coat weather. I've just got my Burberry back from the dry cleaners and I cannot be more excited to wear it. I always like to kind of make a habit of just once a year during springtime getting my trench coats dry clean because I do feel like they're the kind of coats that like they get a lot of wear and particularly because I often wear them on days like today where I might get caught in a rain shower. I do feel like if you let them just kind of sit and be, they can start to smell a bit damp. So it's really important to maintain your coats and especially a coat that's like obviously this expensive is this versatile and much of like an investment piece i think it's really really important to look after them so this is your sign maybe go and take your trench coats to go and get dry cleaned before you start wearing them this april although we're well into april now we're well into the april showers so maybe leave it until like autumn time and like summer when you're not really wearing them but i do think it's quite important to get them dry cleaned as often as you can so cute little spring outfit because all we really need is like a light little layering piece and i just need something that's obviously as i said if i get caught in a rain shower the perfect item that will keep me dry and I can just dash it from the car into Limewood. But bag of the day, I'm going to be wearing my Holland Cooper saddle bag, my new baby, my new favourite. I love her so much. I feel like she really is the perfect spring handbag. I also think she's going to really come into her own in 
autumn because I particularly like the colorway, the style of her I do absolutely love. I wish the handle was a little bit longer because I can just about get it under my arm with a coat on. Obviously it's fine without a coat but it's just ever so slightly short. I wish they made it just like an inch longer but the colorway is just my absolute favorite. The chocolate brown color and especially when I'm going somewhere like Limewood that's like a countryside retreat. I feel like a countryside handbag is just an absolute must and she really filled a gap my bag collection, a beautiful handbag, but it's still very countryside appropriate and goes so beautifully with these tones, with these kind of colors and with the trench coat. So yes, I've got a lovely afternoon ahead having a bit of a pudding date at Limewood. Cute little outfit of the day. Let's get going. So I have just arrived to the beautiful Limewood house, but I'm a little bit early. So instead of heading up towards the house, I'm actually gonna head down the path because I really want to see what they're currently growing in their greenhouse. At the beginning of spring, I feel like there might be some exciting things in there. So this is the greenhouse at Limewood House and this is the first greenhouse I ever really laid my eyes on and fell in love with. This I think it's safe to say is the greenhouse that just made me fall in love with greenhouses. I would love one day to have something even a fraction as beautiful as this. It's a little way down from the house. It's just a little walk and actually fun fact over here just this little lighter patch if you can see in the grass there is actually a helipad where people fly down from London literally helicopter down to spend a weekend here in the new forest which honestly just blows my mind but the little path going up to the greenhouse is one of my favorite things i'm hoping it's open because i'd love to have a little nosy is what they're growing right now before we head inside though even just the outdoors are so beautiful in the winter i can see they've taken a lot of pots in but the pots that they've left out are stunning and they give me so much inspiration for what i would love to do for the front of the house in our front drive i would love to get some like beautiful huge pot and fill it with flowers and herbs maybe some more evergreen flowers um and evergreen plants like this like i think this is rosemary here in the front which is just beautiful maybe that's lavender i'm not entirely sure it's really hard to see right now when they still haven't come out for spring yet but i just love how huge these pots and urns are i feel like maybe having a look at like an antiques center would be best because number one it'll be a bit more affordable and number two it would look really beautiful and like have, have rusted up like these ones have which is just my absolute favorite but i just love the symmetry that they have going on i love the giant pots and the giant urns now let's see if the greenhouse is open keep your fingers crossed it is not open unfortunately that is so so sad but of course i never actually realized this before i feel like the more i'm getting into gardening the more i'm learning the brands but of course it is an alatex greenhouse which i would expect nothing less i'm going to show you a little peek through the glass it's got the most beautiful giant olive tree growing in the middle there and it's like a little table set up so that you can have some like hosting things you can do like dinners and things in there i think you can do like afternoon tea i think they host little kind of workshops inside the greenhouse but they've brought in a lot of the things that are usually outside these little lemon trees are usually outside in the front of the greenhouse and all of the pots as well have been brought inside but oh what a shame that it's not open you'd think as we've been coming into april that they would open it up but i guess it's still just a little bit too early in fact actually i'm pretty sure in march of last year i came down and it was open i think it's just because the weather has been so chilly recently that they're just preserving everything inside of the greenhouse but yeah my favorite greenhouse i think i've ever laid my eyes on if ever I was to create something even a fraction as beautiful as this I would be a very very happy bunny well I'm just walking back up to the house now and I've just spotted something that I can't believe I didn't know that they have here at Limewood but can you see these beehives right here they must make their own honey here at Limewood House which is just amazing I think it's because normally these trees are all completely covered with foliage and like they're just hidden behind the trees but the most beautiful little beehives that is just the cutest thing i've ever seen even in early spring whilst everything is still quite sleepy i think is the best way to say it, it is such a beautiful walk up to the house in the summer this just becomes the most stunning wildflower meadow it's so so gorgeous but as i said even in the, the sleepy early stages of spring it's absolutely stunning so over here is the Herb House, which is the spa at Limewood House, which I can't believe I have to admit, I've never actually done a spa day here, which is definitely on the bucket list. I'm thinking it's maybe like a bit of a Hindu would be really, really fun. But behind me is the beautiful main house, which in a couple of months is going to be covered in the most beautiful 
wisteria but let's head inside and have some yummy food oh my goodness i'm out of breath from walking up that hill and everything inside limewood house is just so curated and beautiful this staircase is one of my favorite staircases in the entire world look at this artwork that they have hanging and the most stunning antique chandelier i'd love to get something similar to this in my dressing room i think would just look absolutely amazing but the touches of green i just love the stripes the fabrics everything is well thought through and just so so beautiful and this is one of my favorites this antique I mean, I can't even call that a console table. It is giant, but it is so, so beautiful. Whilst there's no one in the drawing room, I thought I would give you a little sneaky peek because this is a space that gave me so much inspiration with our living room. When we lived in the old house, the pops of pink and kind of browns and reds, I absolutely loved from this room. Of course, in the winter, they will have the fires roaring and you can even book out this room if ever you're like coming to stay for like meetings and things like that. Look at how many logs they've got ready to burn, which actually is a bit of a chilly day today. I wish they had the fire roaring right now because it would just make this room so so cozy and they can do a nook really really well limewood loves a nook and you know how much i love a nook to be able to look out onto the view which is still looking a little bit sleepy and looking a little bit wintry we do have a few pops of color with the daffodils in the pots but in the summer this is just the perfect place to sit out and have a coffee and soak up the sun and then one of my favorite rooms the boot room which lives up to its name with all of these hunter wellies that you can help yourself to if you're going for a walk around the grounds because heaven knows it can get really really muddy around here i'm in love with this bouquet this arrangement this is absolutely stunning and all of the antique furniture is just gorgeous i love these spaces i just get so much inspo i'm honestly just snapping away whenever i come here because i take so much inspiration from their interior style and all of the decor around limewood they've just taken us into the restaurant and we've set ourselves up in the cutest little corner we've got a gorgeous view of the ponds outside i love this view i know oh it's stunning i totally agree i mean this looks amazing so we're going to baked alaska's Look at the little artwork on the back as well. It's just I, my favourite. I'd love to know. McCla McClachan is the artist. It's so cute. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine doing something similar on the, on the menus for your wedding? I was actually, I'm not going to lie, I was looking at the menus the other day and I feel like I have to. <laughs> like a Limewood themed wedding. That would be so, so cute. <laughs> I know, literally. Oh my goodness, that looks amazing. I mean, look at that little burn on the top. I am so excited to cut the sofa. So excited. Just got back from Limewood now after the loveliest afternoon with Emily. As I said, she really is just one of those people that just, she fills my cup. We can spend hours chatting away and let this be a sign that a pudding date is the best thing I think you could ever, ever go on. It was just such a great idea. The baked Alaska was amazing. Even the waiter said to us, I don't know what they put in this. It's magic. It is pure magic. So I would definitely recommend. A little afternoon in the new forest, going to visit Limewood, going for pudding, having a wander around the grounds. It was lovely. And I've come back with such a spark of inspiration from the interiors at Limewood. They really do just have the best taste in interiors. And I feel like with the house, it really is a slow process. Emily was asking me like, oh, how How's the house looking? I was like, we're at that stage where it doesn't quite look how I want it to look, but I know it's gonna take a long time to get to that point. In fact, we were actually talking about just how long it really does take for everything to happen. Like I think I've mentioned about the shelves that were getting fitted and it's like quite a few weeks. And I know sometimes I'll mention things and then I almost get a bit worried because I'm like, oh, you guys will be wondering where it is. But obviously the shelves are currently being made. I'm currently waiting for like the process of them. And then we need to get them like installed and fitted and things like that. So things do take time. And there's a lot that we can do ourselves. And obviously I'm spending a lot of time on Pinterest and just like browsing websites and things like that. In fact, I don't think I've shown you the mood board for the living room which i am loving our living room i feel like it really is looking cozy but i want to just step it up a notch i am a cozy gal through and through and especially a room like this where 99 percent of the time spent in it is in the evenings i want it to be as cozy as possible so as i've said i want to add curtains to the bay windows i'm unsure what to do behind this space alex's idea was like a big frame like a really big canvas i think would look amazing obviously a big oil painting would be the dream but that is going to be spenny I've had an idea of maybe doing panelling behind here. 
we've never done paneling before so that would be like a big diy project that we'd have to look into but even with things like the log burner and stuff that i know we want to get in here i'd love to do like a full fireplace that will probably be something that wouldn't make sense to do now we'll probably wait until like autumn time to get that fitted because let's be honest we would spend loads of money putting in a log burner putting in a fireplace and then not use it for about five months so i think that would be one that we'll look to do in kind of like autumn time we literally have like a priority list and we keep kind of it's it's a very mental priority list but we keep kind of like shifting things down and being like that can wait that needs to be done sooner um so yeah let me input input let me add in my photo of the mood board for the living room because as you can see we're really going for those like greens the brown earthy muddy tones and i just feel like it's the textures that i want to add in which is why i'm thinking paneling it might be a good idea but let me know if you have any suggestions you guys help me out so much with regards to my nook in the kitchen so it's a big very big as you can see blank wall at the moment which i don't like blank space i think that's actually the hardest thing i've been having to deal with is that the house is still looking rather empty in places and i just have to accept that that's the way it's probably going to look for at least a few months if not even years like sometimes you don't fill something you don't find the right thing to fill it with for a really really long time and i just have to be okay with that but i just love stuff i love filling things i love them looking cozy so empty spaces like blank walls really upset me but let me know any advice that you would think that we could do with this wall whether you think paneling would work whether you think a big print would look better let me know i am all ears but yeah just had the loveliest loveliest afternoon take this as a sign text your bestie right now and say we're going for a pudding day i guarantee they will be 100 percent for it <laughs> hold the phone because it is official i am in a shirt dress and i could not be happier it is officially dress season and shirt dress weather and i am so so excited for it it was actually quite warm yesterday heading to limewood with that jumper on and it's really difficult because the weather is seriously like april showers we've got sunshine and showers like all throughout the day we'll literally wake up at 7 a.m beautiful sunshine by 10 a.m tipping it down with rain by 12 midday beautiful sunshine again like you just don't know how to predict the weather so i feel like a black shirt dress is kind of the way forward this is a gorgeous little holland cooper number which i've had for years and it's my absolute favorite i don't believe it's available online anymore but i'm pretty sure it is available at the bista village outlet store i think it's gone into their kind of like outlet collection so if you do want to pick it up i would definitely recommend it is one of my most worn shirt dresses i absolutely adore it. and i feel like a black shirt dress especially when it's raining is still quite appropriate it's like weather appropriate kind of attire i'm just putting on my current favorite at the moment the bobby brown lip serum this is the plump lip serum in the shade bare pink and it's just such a like your lips but better kind of a shade it feels so juicy i think is the best word to describe it like it really does feel like you're putting like hyaluronic acid on your lips in the best way possible it feels plump it feels glossy without being sticky i am just obsessed and actually speaking of bobby brown i have an unboxing for you and i know we've had a lot of bobby chat recently but the girls did tell me when i was at my meeting at the other week that i had a very exciting parcel arriving which is a bit of a collaboration a charitable collaboration which i always think is so so lovely when brands do this this is collab in collaboration with smartworks and i've heard some really great things about smartworks i believe they are a charity that basically help women get into work whether that's dressing them whether that's giving them interview prep whether that's helping them with the, like the commute to get to like the interview or to get to the office smartworks are an amazing charity so i'll leave them linked down below and this is the pretty powerful collection one mission all love and it looks like we have some absolute favorites in here i love the makeup bag as well i'm hoping this will be available for you guys to shop so bobby brown and Keytree. is that how you pronounce that Keytree? i'm not entirely sure who Keytree is to tell you honestly but i love the makeup bag these makeup bags with like the um clear lids are always my favorite because i feel like it's so easy to be able to see what is inside of the actual makeup bags so that you can like kind of get your stuff out so much easier i love this tissue paper as well how cute is that let's see what we have inside i think this would make such a lovely gift if you have anyone whose birthdays are coming up or anything like that as well as the fact that it is literally a charitable collaboration so first of all oh my gosh i've never seen one at this tiny the vitamin and rich face face that is so so cute you know how much i adore the vitamin and rich face face i'm currently got it here using it every single morning do you know what i'm actually loving is this mixed with the serum the serum is a new release from bobby brown and i actually never 
really expected to have loved it as much as I do but I feel like especially together these are just so so perfect this is a vitamin enrich smoothing serum and I do feel like it really helps give you that almost like airbrush look before you put your makeup on and then obviously with the primer and moisturizer they are just such a perfect combo I've also oh my God, I'm such a bobby freak I've also got the vitamin enrich eye base which I love this for making sure that your eye makeup doesn't smudge so you can tell I'm a big Bobby fan, but I've never seen a vitamin enriched face base this tiny. This is perfect for like travel if you're just going away for the weekend. I'm actually in love with the packaging of this. That is so, so cute. We then have, very excitingly, one of the long wear cream shadow sticks, which I actually use every single day. What shade is this? Smoky Quartz. What is the shade that I use every single day? Because I am just absolutely loving it at the moment. Golden Bronze. So what I basically do is I literally just smudge a little bit at the end of my eyes and then kind of just like tidy it up with my finger. And it's such an easy way to like pull out your eye. I've definitely realized that with regards to my eye shape, it's just so much more flattering. I have a little bit of a wing, but I can't be bothered to sit down every morning and do like a proper, get the stamp out, like get my pencil out, do a wing liner. I just want something messy but cute and I use this every single morning so I'm really excited to see what colours this is. I'm guessing it's going to be more of like a black. This is obviously very like brown smoky but I think this will be such good. Oh it's almost like a brownie grey. I love the look of that colour. <gasps> this might just become my new everyday. It looks a little bit lighter but actually kind of similar. So maybe if I want something a little bit more everyday. I mean look at these two colours. They are very very similar. It, this is the new one here this one down here but they are so beautiful like these bronzy shades i absolutely love them and they're just so easy i mean i know a lot of girls just drop the lid i know a lot of girls that will literally use these every single day for like their whole lid as well which i just think is absolutely amazing for me i like the darker shades just to do a bit of a smudge a little bit of a kind of like smokier look and the fact that this is literally called smoky quartz i feel like this is the perfect shade to do a bit more of a smoky eye so if you want a five minute eye look that looks like it's taking you so much longer these are amazing we then have the crushed oil infused gloss in bare sparkle i've never tried this before <gasps> this looks absolutely amazing oh my gosh look at that that is the most beautiful shimmery gloss absolutely stunning i'm not gonna lie to you though i'm just enjoying the serum too much i'm not even gonna put this on but that is a beautiful shade it's in the shade bare sparkle which i love I feel like for an evening look that would just be so so lovely to give yourself a little bit of something extra on your lips and then we also have a pretty powerful pot rouge for lips and cheeks now i remember being introduced to the pot rouges i actually got introduced when i had my prom makeup done with bobby brown and i used to use these all the time especially if you love I feel like that is just the trend at the moment. It's like makeup looks that don't take you longer than 10 minutes. We're so overcomplicated. Makeup was so over having too many products that you don't really need. I love multifunctional products. And the Pot Rouges can be used as an eyeshadow, as a lip tint, and as a um, cheek tint as well. So you can literally use it on your lips, on your cheeks, and your eyes. And I love the packaging. How beautiful is that? What shade is this? Pale pink. Oh, that sounds like it's going to be right up my street. Oh my gosh. That is so stunning look at that so they're a little bit more kind of like glossy and it's a little bit more of a kind of chewy look which i think is so perfect for summer i'm just going to put a little bit on at my cheeks you really don't need a lot with these pot rouges they're so so lovely and as i said you can literally use a little bit on your lips you can use it on your eyes if you want to go for that kind of like french girl look these are beautiful really subtle but just a little bit of a pop of color so so beautiful to add into your makeup collection so thank you so much to bobby brown for some more gorgeous goodies i'm so so excited about this collaboration and i will be sure to leave it linked down below but speaking of spring dresses and how excited i am to be wearing this this morning i have had a new delivery arrive of some gorgeous new in spring dresses that i wanted to show you because i as i said i'm ready I'm ready for the lighter layers. I'm ready for the beautiful spring colors. And I'm ready to be wearing my signature item all throughout spring, summer, and even autumn. I feel like I really come into my own in the season because for me, dresses are just so timeless. They're so classic. They're so easy to wear and they just feel like me. As soon as I'm in a dress, I'm like, she's back. She is back. So I've got some gorgeous new in dresses that I wanted to show you. Now, when it comes to spring dress styling, I feel like there is one brand that just stands out to me. I gravitate towards them so, so much, particularly at this time of year. And that is 
Hobbs. Hobbs is a brand to me that, I mean, they've been around for such a long time and I feel like they really do epitomize to me ageless design and ageless fashion and i know i talk about this a lot but i know whenever i do there'll always be one person that asks me what on earth is ageless fashion it's basically those designs those pieces those items that you have in your wardrobe that no matter what age you are no matter what stage of life you are they will always look timeless and classic like it's not like a 20 year old's outfit i'm in my mid-20s and i'd be more than happy to wear these dresses now in my 30s in my 40s in my 50s like no matter what age you are these dresses will look beautiful on you and they just have so many like timeless shades timeless designs timeless prints like the florals the polka dots so many pieces that i feel like i could bring out in my wardrobe year on year on year which especially a brand like Hobbs, which is a bit more of like a premium high street brand i don't really know where they would kind of fall under but obviously you're going to be spending a little bit more money on these dresses so you want to make sure you're going to get your cost per wear out and you want to make sure they're going to last in your wardrobe and i have a feeling that these new addresses I'm about to show you are exactly at that. So I apologise in advance to your bank account because these are just so beautiful. They're so stunning. And I actually have to say, I think they're the most Ellie dresses I have ever added into my wardrobe. So I can't wait for the weather to warm up a bit so that I can just wear these time and time again all throughout spring. And I think even into summer, these are going to be absolutely beautiful. So let me show you what I've been picking up. Starting with the most beautiful shirt dress that I am so excited to add into my wardrobe. When it comes to spring styling, I feel like shirt dresses are just the one because they're such a great transitional piece. They can take you so easily from winter into spring. In fact, you could definitely wear this now, even if it's a little bit chilly, you could easily put thermals on underneath this. You could wear it this with like knee high boots. You could wear it with leggings underneath. And then as soon as the weather starts to warm up, change it up for trainers, change it up for sandals, change it up for open toed shoes. Like you've just got so many options. And a shirt dress is the kind of thing that just never dates and never goes out. So as I said, I had this one in my wardrobe for years. And this beautiful polka dot number, I think is gonna be another one I'm gonna keep in my wardrobe but for literally decades. I think it is safe to say it's such a timeless design. I love polka dots for spring as well. I feel like polka dots at spring are just, it almost, I know that sounds really weird, but it's almost like it's not quite as like summery as florals, but it is like a beautiful little pattern that just gives you like a little bit of like a new lease of life, like bringing in the new season. I absolutely love this. Love the fact that you've got the collar. I love the fact that the sleeves are a little bit more sheer. They're like this organza material. And then we've got the most beautiful matching belts that can cinch you in. I'm absolutely obsessed with how this dress looks. And I have a feeling I'm going to get so much wear out of this throughout spring. Oh my goodness me it doesn't get much more timeless and classic than this how stunning is this dress the length is just perfect on me i'm so so obsessed with that kind of like mid axi length i think it works so perfectly with a cute little pair of ballet flats and then when the weather warms up even more some little sandals would be so so gorgeous with this i love how full the skirt is without there being too much material like it just flows so beautifully the shape the fit the cut and even just like the design elements you're not going to be able to see it but there's basically a little popper here which oh hello lighting change my goodness me there's a little popper here which basically it sits just underneath this top button so if you wanted to do it up you could have it a little bit more like preppy for me i like to have my dresses a little bit more like open a bit more undone i find it a bit more casual a bit more comfy i really really love them when they're just a little bit more open and the fact that it's got this popper means that you're not going to have any like bra strewing you're not going to have any like buttons unpopping or anything like that i just think that's such an amazing design detail it's also got a little zip on this side so that you don't even have to like put it over your head or anything i love the fact that as well the belt even has polka dots running through it they're like smaller compared to these ones they're kind of matching the um the polka dots that run down at the buttons which i just love so many design details that they have thought about that just make this dress so beautiful so elegant and just so timeless as i said this is the kind of dress i want to keep in my wardrobe for decades i love wearing it now in my 20s but i can so picture this when i've like got kids and i'm running around after them in like the spring summer and i can even picture this like when i'm a little bit older my kids are grown up and i just have them around for a sunday roast i i feel like i'm picturing in the next 30 years of my life but this dress is just absolutely beautiful i saw this dress drop on their new in section i audibly gasped because i think we can all agree that looking at this dress that this is the most ellie dress that we've ever laid our eyes on the most beautiful white base the most beautiful like pink red even a touch of blue floors running throughout and the most stunning 
design oh my gosh i'm absolutely in love i love the buttons that run through this the fact that it's a v-neck i'm not gonna lie in spring summer i always end up with a bit of a tan line here because i feel like all i ever gravitate towards are v-necks they're just so beautiful again timeless and classic i love the way that they open up your neck and i really love being able to like pair little pendant necklaces with it i just feel like it feels so much more like spring vibes i love it the sleeves again are the most beautiful organs and i'm just so obsessed with the shape of this it's like shapely without being too cinched and i know i talk a lot about beautiful like cinched in waist i know i talk a lot about like that feminine silhouette but i know not all of you adore that so i feel like this is a great in between because it doesn't come with a belt but it is just ever so slightly like cinched in and this is what i love about hobbs i feel like their designs are just so well thought through like the stitching the way that they've like pulled the dress in together oh you just know that so much thought has gone into this and i just I know this is gonna be the kind of dress that I live and die in it throughout spring and summer. It just feels so me. It just feels so timeless. And oh my God, I'm just, I'm literally just desperate for the weather to heat up, for the sun to come out properly here in the UK so that I can just live in these over the next couple of months. I can't actually remember what this dress was called online, but I think we need to rename this the Ellie dress because look at how beautiful this is. Oh my goodness me. I don't think I've ever laid my eyes on a more me dress in my entire life. The way the florals go into this like ombre and they just kind of lessen as it goes down the dress. I feel like it really lengthens my torso and it really makes me look taller, which I'm always looking for in dresses. I love dresses that make me appear taller, make me look longer. That is what I'm always on the hunt for. And this, do you see what I mean when I say about this waist? Like it cinches you in, but not too much. Like there is so much more room here this could easily go in even tighter like that but it doesn't and i quite like the fact that it doesn't because it gives you room for all the food <laughs> gives you room to move it's so comfortable yet still has that feminine cinched in waist and cinched in silhouette which i absolutely adore i love this neckline as well the v-neck i think is beautiful and the fact that it has this ever so slight puff to the shoulder but nothing too extreme i'm someone that has really slopey shoulders so i love it when something can kind of like elevate my torso make me appear taller make me look like like i'm just standing really straight and really beautiful i love that and look at those all kinds of sleeves they are so so stunning i mean this is the kind of dress i'm just going to live in throughout spring summer if i could get married in this dress i would happily do so because it just feels so fundamentally me and that's exactly what i'm looking for when i'm adding pieces into my wardrobe pieces that feel like me and this dress we need to rename it this is officially going to be known as the ellie dress i'm not gonna lie to you i discovered something that i didn't actually know about hobbs up until this year and that is that they have a petite section there are certain brands that I feel like do not shout about their petite section enough because as a petite girl, I mean, you'd think being a petite blogger, like this being my job, I would know every single brand that has a petite section, like how big the petite section is, and like what I recommend. I had no idea that Hobbs had a petite section and I was so excited to see quite a few of these styles on there. I will leave link down below exactly which ones of these dresses are petite, but this one particularly, I fell in love with. So they of course do this in the regular fit, but they also do it in petite. And I do feel like with dresses like this, it's so important to make sure that you've got the fit right. Because one of the things about me being a petite girl, I have the shortest torso you have ever known. I actually have quite long legs, which is why I think I often get comments. I do actually get questioned a lot on my Instagram. Like, are you actually petite? You don't look that short. And I'm like, I am five foot exactly exactly i am the most petite on the petite scale that you can ever get to and i think it's because of my long legs like i think people well, i say long legs in proportion to the rest of my body because my torso is so short i really struggle with dresses like this when they're from the regular sections so i'm hoping this is going to sit on my waist perfectly it's the most beautiful again white base with the most stunning floral detail now this is a little bit more formal i'd say than the other two dresses but this is still the kind of thing that i will just live in throughout summer when i'm going to like garden parties whenever i'm going to be hosting i cannot wait to host at the new house we've not really properly hosted yet and i can't wait to like get the french doors open get the garden sorted we spent so much of the easter weekend just getting the garden to a place where i'm really excited it's like i know it's got to look worse before it looks better but it's looking more like a blank canvas now and i can't wait to get outside to get gardening and to just get it to a place that i can't wait to have people around host all of my friends and family and be wearing the most beautiful dresses whilst i do it you know what i'm like i love wearing this kind of thing but this would also be beautiful for things like as i said garden parties barbecues christenings any kind of like more formal summer occasions but i would still wear this on just like a casual weekend you can style it down with trainers add a crossbody bag even maybe like chuck a little cable on it over your shoulders for a little bit of warmth 
and this is just the perfect dress for me. I am absolutely in love. Honestly, I can't get over these floral dresses. I feel like this is just the most me haul I have ever, ever placed. I've just paired it with my beautiful pair of Castagna espadrilles, which I always, I literally refer to these as like my wedding shoes, um, which I do love because it elevates the dress. I would say this is not a wedding guest appropriate dress. It's far too white. I know that it doesn't look like a bride's dress, but there's always this kind of discourse about like what is acceptable to wear to a wedding. And all I would say is the amount of options you have out there the main thing that I would be thinking as a guest because I have been to weddings where people have worn a similar dress to this and I look at them and I go I know it's not a white dress but out of all the dress options that you had you went for that one really I just feel like that's my kind of thought process so I would say not for a wedding guest but this actually might be really nice if you are the bride for like the night before if you're doing like a bit of a summer kind of garden party the night before or even like a day after thing I think would be beautiful but any kind of like other occasions as i said like garden parties barbecues christenings i think this would be so so stunning but this would also make a gorgeous graduation dress actually i always think white is a lovely base to have as a graduation dress because it just pops underneath your gown and then no matter what color your um sash is it will always go with it now i actually picked this up in a 14 because i always find that whenever i go for a petite i like to size up i probably could have gone for a 12 because can you see there's a little bit of excess fabric like i can kind of grab a bit of a fistful but i don't actually mind it this is another dress that i think is really lovely the way it cinches you in at the waist without being too much so do that with do that with what you will do with that what you will take that information and run with it whether you want to size up and go one size bigger so that it's a little bit more comfortable or whether you really love to have that like cinched in feminine silhouettes up to you but i love the neckline of this i've never owned anything like this with the little kind of cutout detail i definitely think i need to take off my necklace because it's kind of a little bit messy underneath there but i love how it's almost like a detail in itself it kind of saves you from having to wear the jewelry i think it really works with the bob as well i mean the bob with these dresses i'm just loving again the organza sleeves are beautiful and the length is just stunning so another dress that i know i'm just going to live in throughout spring and summer these are literally my bread and butter with the warmer weather i, think I may have just saved the best till last another beautiful shirt dress that i feel like i could wear now actually and this is really making me excited about styling up some more gorgeous pieces. I was chatting with Emily yesterday just about how difficult it's been styling up this spring because this is the kind of thing that I usually gravitate towards but because of the weather, because of the rain, it didn't really feel that appropriate. So being able to wear pieces that maybe are a little bit dark like this shirt dress now that you can wear even if it is raining, you can style it up with trainers, with boots still, even if it is a little bit wet, chuck a little cable net over the top and you can still wear those beautiful spring pieces. I feel like the jumper she was wearing yesterday has really inspired me as well. She had the most beautiful like blue turtleneck on and I just loved the way that it was like giving those like spring vibes I just absolutely adore that so I really am wanting to bring in those spring colorways those spring palettes the spring patterns into my wardrobe the weather has just not inspired me but this haul has seriously seriously inspired me and it's definite I'm doing my wardrobe switch over come tomorrow I cannot wait to get all of my spring summer pieces out and just get myself inspired that's the main thing i think this year because the weather hasn't been inspiring us like we have to inspire ourselves with regards to our spring wardrobes and yeah i think it's safe to say i've saved the best to last because this dress is the most beautiful is this one from the petite section as well yes this is also from the petite section so i think it's going to fit perfectly in length perfectly in shape it again it comes from the most beautiful belt and can we just appreciate the design detail like the fact that the floors run onto the belt as well so it doesn't even like break up the pattern i think it's just stunning again they're running with these organza sleeves hobbs are loving these more like sheer organza sleeves at the moment it's a real trend i'm noticing but i like it i think it's really nice because it brings in that like spring element love the fact that you've got the collar detail on this i feel like this would be great spring workwear actually i always get asked about spring workwear this one feels a lot more casual to me than a lot of the other dresses that i've just shown you and i feel like this to me is like workwear weekend style like just beautiful spring attire and it really is making me so excited to start wearing it these floral dresses again and just get styling up for more of a spring wardrobe and a spring color palette so best till last it's safe to say but how stunning is this navy floral number and here she is in all of her glory the best till last the most beautiful navy floral number i feel like the pink florals just make this dress pop and something i didn't realize actually when i was showing you earlier is look at the detailing of the florals so i thought it was like quite similar to the others where it was just like an ombre and it kind of like just went out at the end no it gets like more at the bottom which i think is so so lovely i always talk about this actually but in skirts i find it very flattering when they 
they have a bit of variation at the bottom because it kind of helps pull the eye up and elongate your torso, which as I said, I'm all about. I'm all about that elongation in your body. I've also just paired this with my little navy blue ballet flats. How cute does that look? An all navy blue outfit. I'm so, so obsessed. This again has the same detailing that the um, shirt dress, the polka dot one has. It's got the little popper here, which I think is so handy because it means that I can just have this open. I don't need to worry about the buttons undoing themselves. I love the fact that I can cinch it in with the belt, which again has the floral detailing to it. So it doesn't like jar. Sometimes I find with some more like lower costing dresses, they just do a plain color in the belt. And then it actually is a bit like, it's a bit too much of a breakup of the look and it makes you appear shorter, whereas this really helps with that elongation. Love the fact that it's got the long sleeves with the collar. I think it's just so, so flattering. The kind of dress, as I said, is completely ageless, completely timeless. I can picture myself wearing this in 10, 20, 30 is time. I am so, so in love. I say that I've saved the best till last, but to be fair, every single one of these dresses has been absolutely beautiful. So I'd love to know which is your favorite. Comment below which dress is your favorite because I can't decide. I love them all and they are all definitely staying in my spring summer wardrobe. I am honestly not joking when I say I feel like I am back. I feel like I am ready for the spring styling now. It is taking me so, so long to get to this point and I always do feel like I lose my style a little bit throughout January, February, and actually March this year. Usually in March, I can start wearing spring dresses. I can start bringing in like my personal style, but I always struggle so much throughout winter. And I know that some people actually have the opposite effect. Like they struggle more in spring, summer because they're much more of like that androgynous style. They love chunky knits. They love like big coats. They love baggy jeans. I'm just not that person. And I thrive in dresses. I just love them. I feel so feminine in them. I feel so like, flouncy and girly and floral and I just absolutely adore being able to add new dresses into my wardrobe. I feel like this really has given me a new lease of life and just it's brought back my love for styling and I cannot wait to get wearing up these pieces more. Like these dresses adding into my wardrobe are just stunning. I know I'm only adding four so like in the grand scheme of a dress haul it's not the biggest haul in the world but what I really want to be doing with my hauls at the moment is showing you pieces that just feel so fundamentally me. They work within my wardrobe. They are timeless, they're classic. I know I'm gonna get my wear out of, and you all know, especially at this time of year, it's literally all I wear. And obviously you can't really wear dresses as much in like winter, it's really, really hard. I know I wear my slip skirts a lot, I wear my jumper dresses a lot. It's just not the same as beautiful, floral, flouncy dresses. And this has just reignited my love for spring styling and made me so, so excited for the coming months to just really come back into my own and just feel like I'm dressing like me again. There's nothing more important than feeling like you in your outfits. Cause I always say when you feel like you, you'll feel confident, you'll feel comfortable, you'll be able to just like really shine in your outfit so I will leave a link actually to Hobbs New and down below because I feel like they have so many gorgeous pieces on there some beautiful like bags hats accessories I really had to restrain myself from not adding more into my wardrobe but I do feel like these four dresses are just the perfect pieces I feel like they're filling gaps I don't have anything exactly like them in my wardrobe I know I have a lot of floral dresses like the polka dot shirt dress beautiful I don't have anything like that the navy blue you know my obsession with navy blue at the moment I am just loving being able to add in some more like current trend items in a very classic way if that makes sense obviously my current obsession with navy blue but i don't think that dress is ever going to leave my wardrobe like i don't think that's ever going to date it's never going to go out of style i'll be able to keep that for years and years and years so i'm so happy right now i really do feel like that dress haul has given me a new lease of life it's made me so excited for spring and just being able to like explore the new forest in springtime is my favorite thing in the world i know going to limewood wasn't as spring-like obviously with the greenhouse not being open the weather wasn't quite there but i can't wait over the next few weeks i'm really really hoping fingers crossed that we just have a beautiful shift in weather that i can go and show you more around the new forest because i know a lot of you guys are asking for recommendations you're asking for like weekend visits and things like that i'll be able to show you more around the new forest more spring styling and i just i really do feel like it's all it's all like it's just excite me so much. I actually saw something online where it was about when we reached the um, clocks changing. I was like, we've made it. And it really does feel like an achievement. Like we made it, the clocks have changed. We're well into April. The weather's starting to warm up a little bit. I don't feel the need to reach for jumpers anymore. Instead, it's like just a light cardigan thrown over the top of a shirt dress. So I do feel like we've made it, but I'm rabbiting on now. I feel like I should probably leave this vlog here. It's probably been far long enough by this point, but I hope you enjoyed coming around the new forest with me. I hope you enjoyed seeing the new in pieces. Let me know if you're excited for like more new forest 
exploring and more new florist recommendations i can show you where to like go and things like that comment down below exploration in your comics i always love knowing who gets to the end of my videos if you want to see a few more a bit more like new forest styling i'm just so excited for spring and summer i am a summer baby i'm born in june and i do feel like the next couple of months may june july i just come alive I do my gardening, I wear my dresses, I go out exploring. Oh, I'm just getting so, so excited for it. So I'm going to leave this vlog here before I wrap it on any longer. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and I will see you in my next one. Bye.